is this is probably the last point at which we can get her out. So, well, I've never attempted something as epic as this, and nor have I, um, you know, brought people you don't know along as well. Oh, man. This is the Great Norse Run, an epic 10-day running adventure from the top of Iceland to the bottom, covering over 40 kilometers of running every day. And it's here in Iceland, the land of some of the most breathtaking scenery, towering waterfalls, mysterious geysers, glaciers, and volcanoes that creates the backdrop for one of the most epic runs in the world. Right then. Uh, so, um, welcome everyone to Iceland and to, uh, and to the Great Norse Run. Um, we have something to discuss as a team. Danny and I arrived um, two days ago, and the day before we arrived, they closed the F26, which is the route that we were going to go through the middle of Iceland on. They closed it because of uh, flooding on the rivers and because of snow which meant that yesterday, Danny and I frantically went and did a reconnaissance of a completely different but very similar route. However, this morning at about 6 or 7 a.m., they reopened the F26, the, the original route of our run. Someone high five me. <laughs> there we go. There is a real risk that if we do the F26 route, the original route, then we'll get to a point and the rivers will be too flooded and we won't be able to go any further comes down to this. Do we want to take a punt on the original route? Or do we want to play it safe with the plan B route? More epic. Well, I'd be disappointed if we didn't go from top to bottom. Yeah. So I guess we're going to Akareli then. <laughs> I think we all just agreed that we want to do epic instead of safe. Very exciting. A little bit of drama, a bit of tension. It'd be epic. And river crossings. Got to have some river crossings. This is Danny Bent and Nick Carter, two of the most ambitious human beings on the planet. Danny is an adventurer and inspirational speaker who has achieved some incredible things in his life, like cycling 9,000 miles to India and organizing a relay race across America that raised half a million dollars for victims of the Boston bombings. Nick has climbed Everest, swam the English Channel, and completed ultra marathons across the Sahara Desert, sharing his stories to inspire young people around the world. They have individually pushed the limits of the human body. Now they want to discover if others have a world of untapped potential waiting to be released. So along with Danny and Nick and Yasmina's crew, Clem and I are here to take photos and make the film. Yeah, there's, there's some butterflies in my stomach, that's for sure. You know, never let uh, my physical inabilities overcome my belief that I can do these things. And so just like that, the Great Norse Run was back on. We didn't know if this would be a sign of things to come, but we did know that the group started to become a team when they all decided to take the dangerous route. So with the weather already showing its true force, we headed six hours to our start point in Akareri, set up camp and lay waiting for the start. None of us or any of the participants could have expected the wild ride we were about to embark on. <laughs> it's all kicking off gear ratcheted onto every single bit of spare space. What we've been saying is if anything falls off, the runners will find it anyway. They can carry it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I just need to get going. The idea of heading to the centre. So, uh, day one, leg one. The idea is that it's all broken up into three or four legs in a day. There are around eight miles, some a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter. 
Today is not a bad day. <laughs> Tomorrow is not a good day. <laughs> um, just in so much as it's, it's long and it's up quite a lot. So this is the very first little bit of the Great North Run. Let's go! Done a K downhill and uh, considering medical supplies already, <laughs> there's 181 miles to go. I've realised I can do a fast walk and we'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Tia does have asthma, but doesn't have an inhaler. Um, as long as she keeps going faster than a walk, that's fine. She'll still complete it. So we need to go and get some inhalers for her. And she just needs to slow down. She just hasn't done anything like this before. I had an asthma attack June, July. I said, what happens if you get an asthma attack? She said, well, uh, I can't breathe, and then I, uh, I'll have to go to hospital. I think she's had trouble all her life. She's had problems with bullying. She hasn't got any cartilage in her knees. As most of the runners reach the first eight mile checkpoint of the day, Tia's asthma and sore knee is casting doubt on the whole trip and making us wonder if this was a good idea at all. Danny sets off the runners for their second leg of the day and despite the wind and rain, spirits are high. But there is a major concern amongst the team that Tia, now visibly far behind, is already withdrawing herself from the group. Don't let yourself get cold here. Oh, no, I'm good. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, though. Hello. I'm just having a little sit down, and mainly I'm really hungry. It all hit at once when I was hungry. I really applaud her for being a legend and signing up to this and saying, fuck, fuck, fuck whatever life's throwing at me. I'm going to go and do some crazy shit. If she does it and makes it, brilliant. If she does it and doesn't, where do we go from there? Ah, oh, I like, I've been close to crying. Her struggle is now everyone's struggle in my head. And I'm like, fuck, what, what are we doing? The toilet flew away! What are you feeling about the landscape so far? Um, Quite like Scotland, actually. It's quite pretty. In bleak. <laughs> Last leg of the day. Yay! You right there? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, he's hugging the loo. Right. You showed me the toilet there? Yes. Yeah, I, I, he's I, I, letting the bear hugging the toilet. <laughs> it's not glamorous, this It's job, not glamorous, it? no. This is not a glamorous job. Day one's done. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think everyone has low moments, everyone has high moments, but as a team, I think we've got something really special. You pick each other up and you cheer each other up and it's not a race, we're not racing Iceland. We're working as a team to get across. So the first day of the Great Norse Run was over. Nick surprised the runners by arranging for everyone to stay the night on a farm, protected from the wind and the rain. What are you eating, mate? Broccoli stalk. 
it's not going to be easy. That's for sure. The river should be, yeah, they can't be deep. But I think it will be okay, assuming everybody of them know how to swim. Did you think his idea to have so many people running through Iceland was crazy? Uh, end of September? Yeah. As the guys nursed tight muscles and celebrated the first day's achievement, they went to bed not knowing how the next few days would pan out. Tomorrow, the road running would end and the team would head into the heart of this magnificent island. Day two! This is a real ball buster. When you just come over a ridge and see endless nothing in front of you, and just seeing how far and how vast there's still to go, it's really demoralizing. I think this adventure is as much mental as physical. You need to keep your head about you. You need to stop the, the bad thoughts from becoming too prevalent. That's the kind of thing you need to stop very, very quickly, otherwise they'll take over. These guys are gonna be broken for the next few days. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna hold my balance over that. So shoes off, feet out, get across. Just glad I didn't fall in. Thought, let's give myself a proper challenge. Push me in a way that I've never really been pushed before. Epic. Feels like we're out in the middle of nowhere now. But yeah, this is, this is a challenge. The terrain is unforgiving. The hills are constant. So it's hard, but that's why I'm here. If it was easy, then I think we'd all be wasting our time. The fact that I could fail at it at any second is the reason why I should be here. When you take yourself to failure, it's when you find out what you're made out of. So um, it's, it's taking yourself to that point, because right on the other side is a, you're going to come out a better person. Part of the daily routine. In times of yore, the wise woman went to the river to wash the dishes and collect the water. <laughs> we don't know if there's going to be many more rivers like this today. And we're coming by a lake, but the lakes all have clay in them, so you can't drink it. So we're getting nice, clean river water with just a touch of algae. Yeah, we're um, a little bit dubious on the fuel that we have for this trip. Basically, I just don't think we've got enough to get across the island. I think with the calculations when they were planning it, um, we forgot about the fact that there might be a one-ton trailer, 200 kilograms on the roof. And we're burning a lot more fuel because of that. We're trying to figure that out. We think we're gonna to have to go back to the last town behind us tonight. Um, but yeah, we're gonna to have to try and figure that issue out because otherwise we won't get across. Tia continues to struggle. So the support team are left with no choice but to squeeze her into the back of the Defender to keep up with the rest of the group. So we've got two problems right now, which is Tia and Diesel. The problem is Tia wants to carry on. She said yeah. to me, even if it takes me 12 hours a day, I'm going to get to the end. I want to really push myself. Mm -hmm. But I think she's already pushed herself you push too yourself far. far for it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to hang off the Land Rover for the last yeah. eight yes. miles. This is the point. This one moment, just this one stage, you have risked your life. Land Rover falling over onto you, so, um, yeah. The, the only thing that concerns me is this is probably the last point at which we can get her out. Yeah. After this, she's with us come hell or high water. Um, the group set off for their last 19 kilometers of the day, climbing in altitude over a stunning but rocky lunar landscape which looks like it could be another planet. This is the first time many of the group have attempted two marathons back to back, and the magnitude of the adventure is beginning to hit home with some of the team. The night would bring relief in gorgeous thermal rock pools and a surprise sighting of the Northern Lights. But the calm didn't last long. Tia kind of basically came in broken, leaning on someone, uh, couldn't get here under her own steam. So... Seeing double. We have to make... And Marco, the doctor's with her, 
and he's basically, yeah, she, she can't go any further. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no. So we have to have a serious conversation. Yeah. Tomorrow will be the last day that you can bail out easily. Mm. Um, so if you don't, then you're in it for the long haul. I, I fully get that like, this is the first time you've ever done anything like this, and I have to say I'm really impressed with, uh, with your mental attitude, with how hard you're pushing yourself. I am more leaning towards your recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, and not because I don't think I can't do it, but I would have to do it, I think, on my own time. I don't want to slow everyone down or have people worry, and, and they did came here for a specific experience. Tia had beaten her own personal best, but this time, the Great Norse run was just a step too far for her. So as Tia headed back to civilization, the group continued across the desert, battling the ever-changing weather. 10 to 15% outside your comfort zone, that's where you learn, that's where you're alive. So that's it, that's 100 kilometers. Whoa, day three. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. I've been listening to wind only for the past hour and a half. Much better in here. Got volcano grit in my eye at the moment. The group spent the night together under one tent, which was tied to the defender to protect everyone from the inbound sandstorm. The simplicity of what was becoming our daily lives was bringing the group together. The toilet paper. Oh, oh. Oh, this doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> the next two days would see the group take on brutally cold river crossings and struggle to cope as the landscape got tougher. My mom had a stroke and uh, she was one of the most strongest women I've ever known. And to see her body fail her and see her sort of become a shell of what she was reminds you of how important it is to appreciate the body that you're in. I don't want to take a damn thing for granted. And so I feel fortunate to be here. So cold is good, hard is good, suffering is good. I don't know how far I'm gonna go, but I know what I'm determined to do. And ultimately, what feels good is the fact that you didn't quit. It's not even eating up the road, it's like, where is the road? No, because it'd be no, but it has. It's, the, the road would have gone next to the, the river. The river has swallowed the, the road and both we and this monster truck over here can't actually find out where the other side of the road is. It's burst its banks and now the river is the road and the road is the river. Well, I can see the truck coming back. And if he can't get through, we can't get through. So that truck basically means our race is over. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Make it across. <laughs> See, <I'm> hey! <laughs> Let's do this. That's freaking amazing. Right. Iceland, thank you. Let's get across Let's here. Let's get across here. I think we could be up there first. Yeah. I'll try and head a bit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can you see that? Mate. So, the road... is straight down. ...is technically over there. Just keep going, keep going. Avoid that edge without 
That's mud, so we can't hit that in the trailer. No, no, we're good, we're good, we're still going. <laughs> That's not one for every day of the week, that is for sure. We've known each other for four days and you would almost put your life in any person's hand who's here and you know that you're confident that they will look after you to the best of their ability. That was the best day so far. We've been running on a lunar landscape for about two days, and I came around the corner and saw that thing. Just looked uh, stunning. Today we come along here to the lake and then drop down, and we saw this beautiful um, sort of side of this, but in fact glacier, and then kind of ran through all the deltas and the rivers and finally got here. Somehow, we managed to catch a night in a hut because the door was left open. <laughs> We've gone roughly 100 miles. We've got roughly 100 miles left to go. And there are a few people here who have a lot of experience, and they probably know what to do to keep themselves going. And there are a few others here who don't have that experience. And I think little niggles will build up to the point where it might overtake some of them. And I don't think any of them haven't got the heart to get across. I just think some of them haven't got the experience. And over the next couple of days, that'll be really interesting to see what happens. The trouble you have with most groups is there'll be someone who is whining or complaining and they bring the whole group down. Weirdly, we haven't got anyone like that. But because of that, we have a different problem, which is that now no one can speak up about feeling bad or having a niggle. So I think there are a few people who are hurting more than they say. My gut feeling is in the next two days, we're gonna have some some emotional fireworks and people are going to start to break down. Um, but I would love to be proved wrong. Yeah, it was a bit, it was a little bit depressing. But uh, still, you know, onwards and upwards, halfway now. Nothing can be halfway, except maybe a Big Mac and a hot chocolate, some whipped cream and marshmallows, <laughs> and a deep fried pizza. Still? Putting a positive spin on it. I love definitely, that. definitely. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. <laughs> I think you're always stronger than you give yourself credit for. Don't put yourself down. Allow yourself to dream. This is not easy, but God damn, it's going to feel good when we cross that finish line. Today was unbelievable. Not one footstep is like a nice sound roll of the heel. It's all landing on stones, your knees are going places, your hips are going places. I think we left at eight this morning and it's now eight o'clock this evening. Posh baked beans and beef stew with pearl barley. We're in the back of a trailer, are we? Yeah, trailer, trailer tucker. Many regular runners are turning into utter, utter legends with a story that is going to last their whole lifetime and probably beyond it. Morning. Here we are, uh, getting ready for 28 or 30 mile run. Um, wish you were here, wish I was there. Uh, catch you soon. I'm here, I'm doing a little video. <laughs> Hello. Happy birthday! It's an incredible thing to witness a group of 20 strangers bond so quickly over a 10 day period. When all the distractions of everyday life are stripped away and all that you are left with are the mountains, the endless roads and your thoughts, friendships are made for life. 
When you sleep together, eat together, and battle the elements together, there is no hierarchy but equality and solidarity. And to witness each individual take themselves beyond their limits, battling injuries and moments of doubt, was inspiring. Never be afraid to dream of what you can do as a human being, because you can make those realities come to life. I spent seven years working in the city of London, insurance underwriting. You'd be in the pub maybe Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Just a general unhealthy lifestyle. Looking back at pictures from the time, I looked a lot older. I was definitely overweight. The January of that year was tough. Lost a couple of family members to cancer. Dad, he's type 2 diabetic, and it was looking like I was going to go that way at quite a young age. I realised I wasn't happy. Now I was like, I need to change this. Quit the job without a job to go to. I started doing obstacle races and found that actually I really enjoyed it. Quite often I find that it helps clear the head. Really proud of actually going, yeah, let's do this. Proud that I signed up, proud that I got this far and I'd be so proud to finish. It's just going to be an amazing achievement. Man, they've got 50K to struggle through today. My Achilles hurts, my toe hurts, my knee hurts. It's gonna be tough as hell. <laughs> We're trying to find B. She's very far back. We can't see her anywhere. She didn't eat her food and we all thought that was a very clear sign of dehydration. So I asked her to drink some, some water, but she didn't do it. So I'm, I'm concerned that she's gonna run out of steam, not because she doesn't have the heart for it, but because she hasn't been taking care of her water and looking after her body. You can see a figure over there, way, way down. Oh, yeah, I see her. It. It's a long way back. Hello. It's all right. You're tired? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna walk. No, 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 I wasn't going to come pick you up. We just wanted to make sure, because I don't know, was it raining here or? It's drizzled. Yeah, it drizzled a bit where we were, so we just wanted to check you were staying dry. So we'll wait for you at the top and then we can have a chat and just catch up, yeah? She's broken. Hey, I didn't even know what to say. That was heartbreaking. I'm exhausted. And, and then I'm spent and satisfied all at once. Long, boring, uphill, downhill. Really rubbishy surface to run on. Sore feet, boring. There's no giving up because what do we do if we give up? We can't, we need to get a helicopter to come and get one of us. I've just got to crack on. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we want the end of it. We're done with it. Well, this is a, this is the fourth day in the desert, and it's just like, come on. When you're in the middle of a leg like we've just done, which was up and down, and the wind is just blasting your face, and it's very cold, and you've got no energy, it's tough to look on the bright side, and that's when you, that's when you, it gets a bit dark in, in your head. We went in here for 10 minutes. I'm going to be OK. I'm going to be OK. Time, time. Talking to a few of them, especially Brian before. <sighs> He's not having a good day. Yes, desert view and stick up your jacks here, actually. After days of endless grey desert, the team entered the lush green National Park, surrounded by beautiful mountains, multicoloured rainbow hills and geothermal hot pools. You could sense the growing confidence within the group that for the first time, they felt that running across Iceland might just be achievable. Everything's frozen. Tents were frozen, shoes were frozen, water bottles are frozen, we're all frozen. But you can just see the scun. My balls are frozen. His balls are frozen, but the sun has just come over that mountain. There's a little bit of a twinkle in everyone's eyes. It, it's possible. We're gonna, we might just make it. 
Watching from a distance as Scott proposed to Anna was great. We must have appreciated. Oh, I've got something. Will you marry me? Are you having a fucking laugh? Will you? Everything's just coming together to make this amazingly special. Don't forget to just take it all in, feel how lucky you are, talk to everyone, and enjoy these last few hours that we're going to spend with each other on this amazing route. B may have been struggling the most, but her focus and determination was proving to everyone that growth comes from overcoming adversity. It's not about the moment of achieving the goal, it's what we learn about ourselves along the way. Come on, baby. Disgusting. It's remarkable what the body is capable of. I had a really rough couple of years. After my goddaughter Rose died, I just howled on trains. I knew I needed to grieve on this trip. There was a moment actually about two days ago when I was suddenly by myself. And for some reason, I just kind of started talking to the girl that I lost last year. And I asked them to do it with me. It was amazing, and actually that was one of the best running sections I had. I've been with one girl now, Jackie, for about four days. We've sung, danced, talked our way through so many miles together. She's a friend for life now. I think people come to Iceland to find themselves, but actually you can lose yourself. The landscape is so never ending. So after eight days, 195 miles, endless injuries, river crossings, wind, rain, sun, pain and joy, the final day of the Great Norse Run had arrived. And what an expedition it had been. Iceland had thrown everything at us yet 17 runners were still standing. I just wanted to say a huge thank you for everyone for being so, so wonderful. I think it's fantastic all the things we've done, the people we met, Elmar back on his farm on day two, being part of uh, Scott and Anna's special <laughs> moment of coming together. Yeah. yeah, which is brilliant. Enjoy today, the last day. Be kind to each other, have fun and I'll see you in another 19 kilometers. No, 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 19 miles. <laughs> Let's get it done. <laughs> Every single person has shown true grit, all the way through from the front runners to Brian and B. For a group this size, we've kind of become one little family. We actually laughed so much. When we come together, we can achieve so, so much more than we could individually. The thing that I've learned about this is that what I really love in life is helping other people. And it's taken this ridiculous adventure to make me truly find that the beauty is a group of people with nothing to prove, everything to gain, everything to lose, coming together as one to achieve something really big. Press the interesting button a couple of months ago and here we are, we've just run across Iceland, which is incredible. I ran across Iceland, I ran across Iceland. The Great Norse Run is such a great example to anyone that no matter who you are, where you come from, what your ability is, what you've done before, you can achieve whatever you set your mind to. I was made for this. Yeah, yeah. I was made for this. I was made for this. Face it.
greatness is in my genetics. Rely on me, you never regret it. Uh, victory's mine, yeah, that's where I'm headed. For this passion and drive, I'm forever indebted. Known to motivate each person here. I'm sure it's my purpose to persevere. Yeah, you looking at the chosen one. I said you looking at the chosen one. Uh, I was made for this. You know that I was made for this. Again, rising with the hunger for another win. Been too strong for too long, I can't give in. That's the discipline of a champion. Overcome adversity and get it.